The applications that we've seen thus far are those which involve direct interaction with the end user. However, unbeknownst to the user, there are certain applications which run in the background. DNS service is one of such services which provide the ability for users to seamlessly access the websites by translating the domain names into their IP addresses. This process is also known as name resolution. In this module, we'd see basically how does DNS operate? What are the factors which determine the overall load on a DNS system, also called the matrix? And if we were to look at the error or the failure which DNS server comes across, how can we quantitatively determine? This is a simple type of DNS operation shown to you with brevity. The steps are numbered. Here you see that the client browser initiates the request with the local name server, which contacts the root name server, and then the authoritative name server for the requested website. And finally, it accesses the website with a particular service. This is one of the widely known types, also called the iterative query. In order to fully understand the load which is incurred on a DNS system, a very interesting paper by Casaliccio and friends titled The Aggregation of DNS Health Indicators, Issues, Expectations and Results considers the figure before you as the reference architecture. This is the overall DNS system which includes various networks, the registering entity, the database, the user application, the on user application name resolver, various DNS zones, each of which has its own naming server. With this as the underlying reference architecture, the paper considers some very important metrics which they call as the health metrics. These health metrics give us an understanding of how much is the DNS system loaded. The first one of this is the incoming bandwidth con consumption. It is actually a ratio between the total amount of incoming data to the overall maximum allowed incoming bandwidth. It is measured in megabits per second. From this expression, we can look at Q factor, the quality factor for the incoming bandwidth consumption. As you can look at this simple mathematical expression, it says if the users in the network are posing enough load such that the overall capacity of incoming bandwidth consumption is reached, the quality factor goes down to zero. On the other extreme, if there aren't any requests made, so the incoming bandwidth consumption is zero, and we see that the quality factor jumps up to one. So this mathematical relationship gives us a fair assessment of how can we determine if the incoming bandwidth consumption is going to exceed what our system can afford. The next important factor is the incoming traffic variation. Again, it is the overall variation in terms of bandwidth consumption for two adjacent time intervals where the difference between these two time intervals is they are adjacent to each other and the session for which this variation in traffic is determined is represented by length i. This unit again gives us the difference in terms of bits or bytes. The mathematical expression associated with it shows that if there isn't any traffic variation, the quality factor remains very high and it follows an exponential decay when the incoming traffic variation increases. This is a kind of jittery or incoherent behavior of DNS system. Therefore, what we understand is DNS system is not going to work very well 
for a jittery kind of request response system. The next health metric that the authors define is the traffic tolerance. It is given in terms of the round trip time for an IP packet that flows between the user and ISP recursive resolver and it is represented in seconds. Looking at its mathematical expression, we understand that the quality factor for traffic tolerance is going to be very high, 100%, if the round trip time is much less than the average measured round trip time. And this quality is going to become zero when the round trip time experienced by an IP packet carrying DNS resolution request takes more than the twice allowable round trip time average. DNS requests per second gives us the total number of DNS queries in a single session. By session we mean a certain time measurement in which we determine the total requests that are made by all the browsers from various computers in the system. It is also represented by a similar mathematical expression. Finally, what we see is that the rate at which the repeated queries are sent gives us an insight that perhaps the same query is being sent out for the same URL because there is some kind of loss which is experienced in name resolution or it is not being well cached by the DNS caching system. It is again represented by the expression given before you. 